So cultural in-group and out-group appraisals, um, and where you see the sites on this on the slides are where I've inserted information that you won't necessarily find online. So this slide, cultural in-group and out-group, comes from um, on the on the internet, neighbor to neighbor conflicts in multicultural neighborhoods, neighbor to neighbor conflicts in multicultural neighborhoods. It's a 2010 article, and basically saying that in group people perceive themselves to be alike and have a more positive view of each other. So Michelle gave us a good example of single parents, right? Single moms. I was a single mom. I don't view that group as a negative because I was one. So be more. We'll be more open to that group. People who have a positive view of each other are more willing to resolve conflict with each other. So we tend to be more invested with people that we have more commonality with. And within the same situation, people can react very differently depending on how they categorize the person causing the conflict. So to illustrate this point, which situation would you feel more negatively toward? A student? versus an elderly lady next door listening to loud music late in the evening. <laughs> Which would you view more negatively? The kid. The kid, okay. And, and why would we view the kid more negatively? Because they're less likely to turn it down if we ask. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we think we'll get more resistance <laughs> from the kid if we ask them to turn the music down. And youth are in another cultural group, right? Um, versus an older woman in another cultural group. So we're already viewing those two cultural group groups differently. Um, any other reason we might think of the kid negatively? Okay. Mom's hair looks like it's on fire. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you on the phone, they said his hair looks like it's on fire. So it's this kind of red, spiky look. Um, but yeah, we might get disrespected, mouthed off to, no, I don't have to turn my music down, right? And why would we might give the um, older woman a pass? Maybe she can't hear. Yeah, she, she, she can't hear. <laughs> we're not thinking that of the kid, but we're thinking of her, right? So we might be a little bit more empathetic to her, right? Okay. Because we're old and we want to sit around and watch our TV too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're old and we want to sit around and watch our TV too. Okay, so this is, um, some of you are familiar, right, with thinking for a change or any kind of co cognitive behavioral um, uh, education, and so this is part of what we um, teach in the jail and also out in the community, um, so that our thoughts, uh, emotions, our motivations, and our behaviors are connected. So for those of you on the phone, I'm presenting this cycle, and so at the top of the cycle is a circle that says, Thoughts, beliefs, values impact emotions. So our thoughts we have um, are often connected to our values and our emotion. Then we have an arrow going to the next circle which says emotions. Um, so thoughts are connected to emotions. And the sub point under emotions is shape our motivation. So we go to our next circle which is motivations. And so then to our behavior circle. So Starting at the top, if my thought, we're just using that example of that kid, if my thought is, oh, he's going to be disrespectful, um, uh, he needs to just turn down that music, that is then attached to an emotion. So I might get pissed off, I might get frustrated, I'm not um, thinking and in, in, I'm not having very you know, happy feeling emotions associated with that thought. And then my emotion then shapes my motivation. Okay, well I'm going to just get up then and go next door and tell that kid he's to learn some respect. And that's then my behavior, the outcome. I go over and do that or I, you know, tell his parents he really needs to get, you know, know that other people are working and whatever it might be. Um, and, and this is useful uh, for us to um, assist the people that we serve in knowing that, that nothing is just completely automatic. There's always some thought attached, there's always some process. We think it's automatic because it's unconscious. So if I'm uh, contemplating criminal activity or I um, you know, hit somebody, I'm thinking, oh, that was just automatic. But I had an emotion that was attached to it and I had a thought attached to that emotion that drove my behavior. 
So what we do is we work with them in kind of slowing down that process called thinking reports about attaching all of these things together. So for us, um, if we're having a thought, a biased thought about somebody, that will impact our emotion toward that person, and that will attach our motivation or our willingness to work with that person, and the outcome is our behavior, how we then serve that person, right? And we all know that nice people who are appreciative are easier to serve than people who are not so nice or demanding, and yet they have the same need. Any questions or thoughts about, about this? You folks good on the phone? <laughs>